What's going on down there? We're doing the best we can! Say goodbye to your frontal lobes. While we can look back fondly on a myriad of shows and cartoons from our childhood, there's always a handful that stick out a little bit higher for the mark they left on you during their time in the zeitgeist. Some of these shows can be well known, huge popular juggernauts, and some could have been gone after you blinked. Nickelodeon was no stranger to having many shows follow that flash in the pan formula where some incredible shows would be treated as if they weren't anything more than a distraction until more SpongeBob or Fairly Odd Parents would come on. And these shows all would have something unique about them. Regardless if you enjoyed them or not, these cartoons would always try and find some ways to stand out, and that is sometimes why you can remember them a bit better. We covered on the channel plenty of cartoons you may or may not fully remember, some more than others, but today I wanted to cover something that is stuck in my brain, the theme song ripples through my thoughts, and the art style captured my attention with a specific look that propels it into the forefront of my fondest memories. My life as a teenage robot. Shout out to Paleocino for being the first to guess today's video correctly on Twitter. In fact, a lot of people actually guessed this video correctly, so make sure to follow me on Twitter to participate in these for future episodes. I wanted to spend some time with you lovely people here today and go over why I love this show, how it wasn't treated well by the network it was on, and an open discussion with you on such an interesting, and in my opinion, fun show. So make sure to drop a like on this video for more content like this as it helps the video out, and I'll turn myself into a robot who will save the day after a few rounds of Galaga at the arcade. What is my life as a teenage robot? It's a show. Yeah, thanks, Sherlock. The show follows the life and adventures of a teenage robot, XJ9, or Jenny, created by her mother, the eccentric Dr. Noreen Wakeman, as to be a daughter to her, as well as fight the evils that be who threaten Earth and the inhabitants of it. And I thought I had a lot to deal with when I was a teenager. Math, science, even had to read The Great Gatsby once. Yeah, I know, I had it rough. Now, we don't start our story in 2003 when the show premiered. We actually have to go back to the mythical year of 1999 with Oh Yeah Cartoons, a three season long show that would feature short animated cartoons, some of which later became actual shows from their presented concepts here. Stuff like Fairly Odd Parents, Chalk Zone, and Oh Yeah, My Life is a Teenage Robot. What we saw for that specifically was a version of that show called My Neighbor Was a Teenage Robot. The whole short would be kind of redone and reworked for the original pilot episode for the show in 2000. And it is pretty cool to look back at the differences between the two. Rob Renzetti, the show's creator, has had plenty of directorial and writing experience over at Cartoon Network with their line of hit shows like Powerpuff Girls and Dexter's Laboratory. Later on, you may also know him for his work on Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Sam Ryan Jack, and even Gravity Falls. So at some point, most likely, the work of Rob Renzetti appeared before you with so many various different genre playgrounds. There was surely something for everyone to find enjoyment in. Out of the two show ideas, he created in the 90s, one being Mina and the Count for Cartoon Network's What a Cartoon Show, which later premiered the rest of the shorts for that show on Oh Yeah Cartoons on Nickelodeon, and My Neighbor Was a Teenage Robot for Oh Yeah Cartoons as well. One of those clearly left a larger mark with the network, hence we eventually got the fully created show of My Life is a Teenage Robot. So now you got the background. To even get to the actual show itself, there was a bunch of fascinating steps that led to its existence. Throughout the series, we follow Jenny as she balances life as a superhero as well as wanting to be a normal teenage girl and fitting in amongst her peers. Something super memorable were the characters in the world the show built. Aside from Jenny and her mother, there was her best friend, the neighbor, hence the name of the original short, Brad. The first real friend that Jenny ever made, and he plays the entrance role for the audience to find themselves relating to, is he's just a regular dude. While he may try and assist Jenny when and where needed with her, you know, saving the world and stuff, he's the more relatable everyday guy. His younger brother, Tuck, usually tags along on these adventures, and even though at first first wasn't so sure about befriending a robot, he quickly gets enthralled by Jenny and her superhero abilities. And then there's Sheldon. He sometimes means well, but he's head over heels in love with Jenny. Yeah, he's into the mechanically built if you catch my drift. He's not the biggest member of the main cast, but he has served as a helpful aid to Jenny when in need of some modifications or upgrades. He can come off creepy though, but... I don't really have a butt here, he can just sometimes come off creepy, I don't know what you want me to tell you here. And oh yeah, the Crust Cousins, who can forget them? Aside from having one of the grossest sounding names, Britt and Tiff are in most cases the school antagonists to Jenny and the main cause of her stress within her school life. They're rich, they're mean, and they make me want to stuff crust pizza. Jenny's robot name is XJ9, which alludes to her being the ninth model her mother has made. So yeah, she has eight older sisters that were eventually introduced in the season one episode 
sibling Tsunami, and have appeared a few times beyond that as well. XJ 1 through 8 feature distinct differences in size, emotions, and power levels, I guess, to put it plainly. I always liked this specific inclusion as it shows that there was a more nuanced look into the mad scientist aspects of Noreen and the bond between the sisters when they all come together. But my personal favorite character in the show is the atmosphere. Yes, I am serious. I think it speaks volumes on the overall enjoyment of the show. It aesthetically builds this retro futurism, more specifically streamlined modern style, giving off the 1930s feel of a more rounded edge, sleek looking, architectural environment to everything in general. Much like myself, except I'm 25 pounds heavier. The show took the influences of various sci-fi outings for inspiration for designs, plot points, characters, and this overall blending of the world created became an H.G. Wells-esque playground of stylistic animation and color palettes. At the bare minimum, if all else failed in the show, the look of it would leave a familiar, yet mysteriously intriguing blues clue in your noggin to live on long past the show. Luckily, we don't have to worry about the bare minimum. The show was critically praised, 11 Annie Award nominations, and even an Emmy in which they won, not just nominated, actually won the Emmy. The stories were well written and the characters had their individual growth throughout the show, which was integral in investing time into the show. And with all of this good, what went wrong? Well, aside from the insanely cumbersome turnaround time for episodes demanded by the network, it was almost nearly impossible to get these episodes turned in on time. Luckily though, Rob and his team still worked around the clock to still provide quality programming by these deadlines. But over 12 months, only having 13 episodes released, having roughly one episode a month, blockaded any momentum the train had to keep the show popular and of interest. We wouldn't see season two of the show premiere until almost a full year later in early 2005. Well, there was was a December 2004 release of a Christmas episode, but the show picked back up in late January following that. But it only gets worse from here. Season 3 of the show might as well call itself Danny Phantom because it sure went ghost. While in various parts of Asia it would premiere season 3 out of order, Nickelodeon wouldn't show these final episodes in the US until late 2008, concluding with the end of the show in 2009. Ridiculous! Never heard of such a thing. So for six years, the show ran for... 40 episodes. Oh, and we didn't get the final season on Nickelodeon, rather on the secondary Nickelodeon channel, Nicktoons, which would be noticed as the network where cartoons kind of go to their great beyond. It's a sad story about an incredible show that was highly praised that because of its release schedule had a limited audience resulting in low viewership, which all totaled up to Nickelodeon self-sabotaging the show into obscurity failure. But failure is a strong word. It's only considered that to Nick, who decided it wasn't good enough to continue on. But even if it ended this way, the show to me, and to many, many others, is incredible. Art is subjective, sure, but there was a genuine masterclass at work that poured their soul into every frame every sentence and every final turned in package that came together and made a show that wasn't around for long, but left its presence in the cartoon space, giving it the cult longevity it has excelled into. The show overall to me, while not my personal favorite cartoon of all time, is easily up there for the impact it did leave on me. Taking all the inspiration from the sci-fi influences that I love and spinning its own unique twist and homage to them all, it truly checked off all the right boxes. It's always nice to see when the show isn't forgotten about when it comes to random bits of merch like this shirt I got that came out this year, as well as many are hopeful that within the new Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl video game coming out later this year, that Jenny may be a playable character. Unfortunately, the DVD sets were discontinued this year, but on Paramount Plus, the show can be found in its entirety. So at least there is a somewhat accessible way to access this show. Hey, I can at least still watch episodes on my video now. Wait. Jesse McCartney! I would love to speak on this show further in the future, dig into individual episodes or seasons of the show. So if that's something you'd like to see, leave a like on the video, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments. As well as what were your favorite episodes of the show? Did you ever actually even get a chance to watch the show when it aired? I mean, you've heard from me, so now I want to hear from you. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.